in a few days, weather permitting, it's going to be that time again. You remember this time of the year last year when I went out on Mike's boat, the Titan Uranus, and we caught 162 pounds or more of halibut. He got a whopping 70 pounder, 70 plus pounder. Mine was like 37, I think. And it is that time again. In a few days, less than a week, I think, it's gonna be the opener. Westport Marine Area 2, halibut. Deep water. So it's deep water halibut and uh, deep water lingcod. And so I am, once again, going over my gear. Things seem to be in better shape. Last year, I had to really clean them up. They were really rusty. But this year, they're in super good shape. Not as much rust. It's just a copper tube on the hook shank. Yeah, you know, it's cool, isn't it? Everybody's gonna be doing it now. I still got a good supply of these. I haven't had to buy these for a couple of years. I really like these big black ones. Or these super big black ones. They just seem to work better. And then there is the rigging, of course. And if you remember in last year's video, I showed you what I use as far as uh, hand tying the slip second hook, big mooching leaders that I use for halibut because I like to use large baits. Let me show you those again. And these pipe jigs are made with number 14 treble hooks and all stainless steel hardware. And the hooks I use for tying up mooching leaders for halibut are the Big River Bait Hooks, 12 watt. Super big hooks. Let me point this out to you, okay? Um, in all of my videos, I like to show you what I do to catch fish. I am not an expert. I don't claim to be an expert, and I do not try to portray myself as an expert in any of these videos. What I try to do is show you what I do, and I try to give you the reasons why and explain why I do what I do. So um, there are enough experts out there. The last thing I want to do is try to be another expert, because I'm certainly not that. Um, the, reason I, the reason for that is because there are so many different ways to do everything when it comes to fishing. You could use a leader like this. You could use a single hook like this. You could catch more fish another way. There, are, With every single thing, no matter what it is, whether it's putting line on a reel, whether it's tying a knot, whether it's casting, drifting, downrigging, trolling, it doesn't matter. There are numerous ways to do it, and all of them can be very effective. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you which way works the best. I'm gonna tell you what I do to catch fish. So anyway, so what I have here are mooching rigs that these are the same type of rigs that I tie for salmon when I'm out in the ocean down rigging for salmon and trolling for salmon, except I use smaller hooks, obviously. I still use the big river game hooks, but I use the number twos. I think they're number twos, maybe number fours. The hell, I don't remember. Um, these leaders are six feet long. 200 pound test, 150 to 200 pound uh, Sampo stainless steel snap swivel on this end. That's the end that goes to the weight. Actually, it goes to the, to the main line that goes to the weight. And then this is the leader. And this is on a slip second hook. And you can see how hard that is to move. But you can adjust it based on the size, based on the size bait you want to use. You could even draw, draw them up really close like that if you want to. I like using mackerel. And mackerel come, you know, I'll use a whole mackerel, which is probably, you know, can be 12 to 14 inches long. And I'll hook the mackerel, I'll show you on the boat, I'll hook the mackerel up underneath the jaw, right through the top of the head, and then this one through the back, just to pin it in there a little bit, because I do that with these, but not on salmon, uh, because the hook is just so big. And when that mackerel is down there on the bottom, this hook could actually be dangling down away from it. So I do put these into the body, unlike on a herring when I'm trolling for salmon. This is a slip second hook. Now the way I tie these, 
Yeah, I will show you this at some point in the future. It's the line just lays on the shank here, and then I tie a um, egg loop knot over the top of the line. And when you pull that thing tight, depending on how tight you pull it, it's going to restrict that thing from moving. So if you pull it too tight, it won't move at all. It'd be very, very hard. But anyway, I've never lost a fish with this rig right here. And I always leave a little bit of tag line out there like that. That way, if it does loosen up a little bit too much, all you have to do is grab those two with a pair of pliers and then snug them down just a little bit. But this is what I use for halibut. Now I have to get up there and grab those rods. My shop has become a big cluster. Okay. There's one. This is my favorite rod for halibut. That's the Tanicum 1000. That's my baby right there. Another pro tip here. <laughs> Electric reels have to have a cord. Now when you buy these, when you buy these cords, they come about, I think they're like six feet long. And so what I do, what we all do, is in order to give yourself more flexibility on the boat, we make them longer. So this one here is, is spliced in to another cord, heavy duty cord that holds the, uh, you know, the current. And so now this thing is like 12 feet long. So it's like 12 feet long now. And so I always have two and then a brand new spare just in case. And of course we all do it so we have lots of spare cords in case somebody's cord fails to work properly. Um, another thing I always do before going out, notice how easy that comes out? Now I don't know if you guys do this, but what I do with all of my reels, no matter what they are, is when I'm done using them for the day or for the season, I will loosen the drag all the way up. That way there's no tension on that drag. But anyway, before I go out halibut fishing, I'm gonna take this right here and tie a new knot. Another thing I do to prepare for the day is uh, I'll plug these in. These are the same Scotty outlets that I have for the downriggers on my sled. So I'll just plug it into the sled and make sure that these reels work. Every year before and after use, I take these plugs and I'll put some dielectric grease on them. Put some dielectric grease in the holes here. And also on the outlets on my boat, I'll put dielectric grease on those two. That way everything is protected from corrosion. Oh, I forgot to tell you. And just in case you're wondering what kind of knot, these all get a polymer. My big rod has 80 pound test power pro. The smaller rod here with the 750 Tanicum uh, has 65 pound test power pro. I think I'm pretty much ready to go. Rain gear, tops and bottom. Tool belt with knife and pliers. Every year after I get done fishing for salmon and halibut, I take my bait knife, I sharpen it up, and I clean up my pliers and oil them. Small jigs, just in case you run into some bottom fish, suspended bottom fish, extra two pound weights, extra jigs, all of my grubs, rods number one rod number two rod and the bottom fish rod that i forgot to get earlier all tied with new knots cords extra tackle and terminal gear as far as i know that's it the next time i see you we're going to be 45 to 50 miles offshore fishing in 600 to 800 feet of water See you there.